Olivia Martin here with this week's episode of the Influential Women of Beverly Hills. Today we are joined by Thea Andrews. Mrs. Andrews attended Queens University, majoring in Spanish and Latin American studies. After graduating, she started her career as a broadcast journalist and TV personality. She has diverse experience in the worlds of entertainment and sports and has been on many major shows like The Insider, Entertainment Tonight, The Talk, as well as ESPN2's Cold Pizza, just to name a few. Thea, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I have a couple questions about how, as I mentioned before, you went to Queen's University in I Canada. I did, yes, in Canada. The Canadian one, not the, the Canadian American one. Because I think there is one in Queen's New York as New well. New York, yeah, exactly. Right. So you majored in Spanish and Latin American studies. And this is so different from broadcast journalism. <laughs> how did Very you- Very different. How did you end up breaking into the broadcast journal journalist field and how did your studies help you in the long run? Well, it's funny because when I was in school, uh, especially in high school, we didn't have a setup like this. I mean, walking in here today, I was so impressed that you have Thank this you. at Beverly Hills High. I'm thrilled to be here. And by the way, I'm a big fan of your show and as you know, a big fan of yours for a long time. Thank so you. I'm very happy that we finally got to do this. And um, I think it's so neat that you guys have this opportunity to do this in high school. Uh, we did have journalism programs in, uh, in, in Canada when I was growing up in secondary school at a, a community college in Toronto where I grew mm -hmm. up. Uh, my parents didn't want me to go to that community college, so I went to Queen's University, which is a great school, did not have a broadcast journalism program. So when I graduated, I really didn't have the intention of going into journalism at all. I started in business, and I had a friend who was a director who said to me, you know, you're a really good storyteller and a great writer, I think you'd be a great TV producer. And I didn't know that was a career. Yeah. And so I knew I didn't like what I was doing. I was working for a human resources company and mm -hmm. it was, a, a lot of people thought it was a really glamorous job. I was flying all around the world and kind of doing interesting things, but I just, when I heard that something clicked and uh, I went and I got a job as an intern at a, a company called, um, Lionsgate owned a company called uh, The Life Network and I just worked my way up. I started writing, I started as an assistant, and uh, I became a production assistant, and I went through all the jobs that everybody does. I was a teleprompter, teleprompter operator, uh, I did sets, I did props, I, did, I became a writer, uh, and eventually a producer, and then a host. But all that stuff, doing all that stuff before I became a host yeah. and before I, be, I went on air, really helped make me, I think, a better reporter. That's amazing, it sounds like with the advice from your friend, you kind of just fell into the, the field and you really worked yourself up to where you are today and you've been on shows like cold, ESPN2's Cold Pizza, mm -hmm. which I know about, but could you explain it further to the audience? <laughs> cold Pizza was a morning show that ESPN did. Um, at the time, they wanted to do something a little different in the morning. They had Sports Center, which of course mm -hmm. is a really big franchise for them. Uh, and they saw an opportunity for a morning show that guys would watch. They thought, you know, there's really nothing, no morning shows that are targeted to men. They, they seem to be more targeted to the female demographic, mm -hmm. shows like GMA and the Today Show and all of that. So they thought, hey, maybe there's guys out there that want sports, but they want a little bit of uh, Sports Center with a little bit of CNBC and a little bit, you know, a, a mix of everything, a bit mm -hmm. of lifestyle, a bit of business news, a bit of sports. So their idea was that they would mix it all together in a morning show. Um, it didn't work out quite the way they planned, but you'll find in television that that often happens when a show launches. Mm -hmm. A show will launch thinking it's going to be one thing, and then it evolves depending on how the audience reacts, and uh, right. you move with it. Yeah. Well. Now, by the way, that show is called First Take. Okay. And it's very much a sporty show and not really? so much morning show anymore. Yeah. <laughs> what was working at the ES um, Sports Center, um, what was the environment like as a female working in a place where there are primarily male hosts? Well, you know, it's funny because I, it, while I was employed with ESPN, I, we shot our show in New York because they want, as a morning show, they wanted to have that New York feel. They wanted to make it easy for guests. Mm -hmm. ESPN is based in Bristol, Connecticut, mm -hmm. uh, which is farther outside the city. Mm -hmm. um, so I never worked on the campus, as they call it. I okay. was in this, the New York studio. So it was very much like a traditional studio. There was a lot of women working there. Um, it, was, it was pretty much on par. So I didn't get that, but definitely uh, on the campus in Bristol, it's very, you know, guy-ish, there's a lot more men than mm -hmm. women there. Um, but I think if you love sports, there's no other place in the world to work. 
Right, right. That's the dream job it's for the every dream job. It really is. Broadca ma male broadcast journalist. Yeah, and it's a bunch of guys that really live, eat, breathe, dream, think sports, and yeah. they have done this their whole lives. And it's so funny for me now to have two young boys mm -hmm. who are nine and five and that's what they're like. And now I, really? whenever I see them, and it, I was just joking around after the weekend, we spent the entire weekend going to sports games, talking about sports games, watching YouTubes of old professional sports games. When there's nothing on TV, mm -hmm. th there's not a game on, they'll watch, because now you can watch YouTubes of old games. Yeah. They'll, they'll watch classic games, and then they talk about them. And then we play a little Xbox sports, and I thought, you know, this is so funny. This is how, these are the mini versions of how my old coworkers at ESPN were. So this cute. When they were five and nine, this is what they were doing. That is so cute. Are they interested in a specific sport or just all around? They both love football. They both love baseball. Those are the two favorites. And then yeah. a little bit of everything else. Yeah. But literally everything else. So I actually met you at an organization called Visionary Women, mm -hmm. in which you're on the board, as mm -hmm. well as for that specific night you were the moderator. Mm -hmm. How did you become involved in Visionary Woman, which is an organi organization that empowers women and supports women? Well, Visionary Women was founded by um, some women that I'm very fortunate to call my friends. Angela Nazarian, um, Lily Bossy, the mayor of Beverly Hills, who of course is a friend of yours as well and has also been a guest on this show. Yes, She's yes. an incredible woman, a woman and a couple of others. And uh, our goal really is to bring light to issues that affect women and try to uh, provide support, try to provide uh, money to support these various women's causes. And what we do in our salon series is we pick a different topic every salon. So we mm -hmm. usually have three or four a year, or a season as we call it. And uh, we have a really active base of members who come out and support us. And uh, we just try to shine light on topics that maybe necessarily, have not necessarily been looked at by our members before. So it's a new organization, but it's grown exponentially in the past two years, and we're really excited with uh, just everyone's enthusiasm for it. Yeah, well, it's a really, really great organization, and I Thank highly you. recommend it. The one I specifically went to was on mind, body, and soul, and it yeah. was just very inspiring, yeah. as well as being surrounded by so many women that were also interested. Yeah. It was a really, really great place to be. We got a huge response for that. It's funny, yeah. you, never, you, you never really know how people will respond. I thought, well, this is LA. There's a lot of people that are already really engaged in the topic of their personal health and mm -hmm. mind, body, and soul, which was the topic. But we got an overwhelming number of people responding. We had to actually increase the size of the ballroom we were using. Wow. We started with a smaller ballroom. We had to call the hotel and say, hey, can you put us in a bigger ballroom? And then we had to call the hotel again and get it expanded even more because we just had so many people so on the waiting list and we wanted everybody to come. So uh, we were, were really fortunate and really, really grateful. It sounds like it's totally taken off, which is so great. Congratulations thank you. to you. And, and thank you for coming and being a supporter and your mom as course, well. It I was amazing. It. I can't wait for the next for the next show or the next panel that you guys have. Well, we want, listen, we want to get you involved. And we were just talking about this, how we've had such a great response. We want to get the next generation into, we want younger women and we want a, 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 like women in school to start getting yeah, involved as well. I think that's a great so idea. we're going to rope you in and get you on, our, on some of our committees. I would love that. I got you on camera saying that. <laughs> well, you also mentioned earlier how um, with the rise of social media, some people have said that the industry is changing while others are saying that it's simply dying. What is your, um, what are your thoughts on this topic of where broadcast journalism is going to in the future? I wouldn't say it's dying. Look, there's no doubt that there, there's less people watching news on TV. I mean, that's just a, that's just a fact. The numbers don't lie. Even when I came to LA, I started, my first job was with Entertainment Tonight. And I remember the ratings that we got at that first job and they don't get the same ratings now because the market is diluted. You know, the quality of the shows is not necessarily any less, uh, but there's just more things to watch. This is a reality for everybody though. It's not mm -hmm. just broadcast news, it's all TV, it's all, it's everybody. Right. So yeah. every single person that creates content is facing the same challenge. So I think it's, it's made people more competitive. Um, I think it's made people sharper in their jobs. And it's also made people, I think, more horizontally integrated. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, when I started in the business, you did one thing and you were just that thing. Well, I'm, I'm on air and I'm a reporter and this is what I do. Mm -hmm. uh, or I'm this or I'm that. And now I think people, um, it's actually making people 
do more things and mm -hmm. be better at more things because they've got to work across more platforms, first right. of all, which yeah. is really, really challenging. And just it's overall more competitive, you know? Yeah. It's a very it's a very competitive business right now. I've well, I'll give you an example. When I started and when I was a, I started when I was first out t as a TV host, mm -hmm. there was a lot of people who were TV hosts that literally all they did was read prompter. Like that was you could you could have a you could make a living doing that was a right. job. I'm yeah. a TV host, so I'll go out and people will write all this stuff for me and I'll they'll roll the prompter and I'll read it and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's not really a job. If you th that's not a job you can get anymore. If you think you're going right. to have a career, you know, being that kind of TV host, and a lot of people did have great careers like that. Mm -hmm. Now most of the people that I know that are successful in the business are are, are producers. They're writing their own content. Mm -hmm. They're you know putting the show together along with everybody else because you have to. You right. know, you, you really have to. Yeah. So um, it's that's what I mean about it's made people better in a lot of ways. Right. Because these people are have a very rounded, well-rounded um, experience in all of these different fields. Right. And then that can, of course, take you to other places, it sounds like. Of course. I, I mean, I can't tell you how many women have come to me or their parents will call me. Mm -hmm. or I meet their moms, like I met your mom, who is so lovely and who I adore. Thank you. They say, my daughter wants to be in the business. Can you help her? Can you? And uh, I say, sure. And I'll have conversations with them. And I'll say, what do you want to do? And they say, well, I want to be on TV. And I'll say, well, but what, do you, what, do you, what are you interested in? I'm interested in being on TV, you know? And right. I say, well, do you, are you gonna learn how to write? Are you gonna learn how to cut tape? Are you gonna learn how to tell a story? Are you gonna learn how to produce? Because you won't stay on TV very long if you don't know how to do all those things. Mm -hmm. So it's people like you who really get it and you are here Thank working you. this hard that ultimately I think will be successful. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Um, to wrap it up, I have a couple questions. What advice what is the best advice that you have gotten in life? In life? In life. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. That's a really good question. Thank you. I don't know if I have a single piece of good advice. I know my mother, I remember my mother telling me once when I was in high school, mm -hmm. and since you're in high school, maybe this will be helpful to you now. And I remember I was talking to her and there was, a, there was some, some gossiping situation going mm -hmm. on. I went to my mom and I said, oh, this is terrible, and these people are saying this, and this person's doing that. And she looked at me and she said, Thea, I'm however many years old, and the only, I have no regrets in life. The only thing I regret is any time I wasted worrying about what anybody else said about me or anything. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting. It kind of, had, it was like a, a moment for me, and now that I'm a little bit older, I realize, it, you know, that really is a waste of time. Yeah. You just got to do your thing right. and be you. I mean, you're an amazing young woman. Thank you so and much. And so, you know, you just keep on your path and don't worry about what anybody else is doing or saying. Right. I love that advice. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. And thank I'm you. I'm so happy we finally got to do this. I know. I'm so happy too. Thank you so much for coming in today. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure, it. my honor. Thank you. And thank you so much for watching this week's episode of the Influential Women of Revolution.